Yes, go. It's thanks, Emily. You're doing a great job. Oh, thanks. Right, part one. Find the determinant of the matrix in terms of A. <coughs> should, uh, should we just do it for the top row this time? So the top row would give us, I'm going to write it out in full because that's a good way of making sure you're being careful with it. It's A times that minor determinant oh. minus 2 times the next one, 2, 1, 1, A plus minus 1 times 2, A, 1, 1. Now we can work this out. That A times A squared minus 1 minus 2 times 2, A minus 1 minus 1 times 2 minus A. And that's where we are. Which gives us A cubed minus A minus 4A, now careful again, minus, minus, so plus 2, minus 2, plus A. The minus signs were an absolute nightmare in all this. Really careful with it. We've got A cubed. Now what else has gone on here? We've got minus A, minus 4A, plus A. So minus 4A, and that's your lot. Plus 2, minus 2, I mean that's it. That's what we get. So, for part two, you now have to consider what was going on for these values. And this is really important. What they're looking for when they link these questions together, it is a hence thing. They're not looking for you going straight to writing out the equations and pretending that that never happened. It's all about the determinant. That you did that. I did that because because I got that wrong, every single answer was unique oh, and I knew that okay. wasn't right. So that's why I ended up doing things that weren't relevant. Right. I could have prompted you to check your first... No, I didn't. I, I just I completely forgot about the whole minus thing. That's what Ooh. I did. Yeah, and lots of people forgot about it. I did it, it right. <laughs> right, let's, let's think about what goes on with this then. If A equals 3, then the determinant of um, the matrix D, sub 3 into that, and we get a number... What do we get? Um, 15. Is that right? 27 take away 12. Yes. 15. That's, that's it. That's the job done. The question said, state whether there is or not is or is not a unique solution. That's not zero. Therefore, unique solution. That's it. Move on to the next question. Don't spend any more time thinking about when A equals 3. That's all we needed to do. We didn't need to solve it. We didn't need to find it. The solution was x equals minus two fifths, y equals one, z equals four fifths, but we didn't need to find that. Part B, that's A, um, A equals two. Now this time we are expecting this to give us um, zero. Actually, if we're looking at this, you remember we talked about this the other day as well. Looking at this here, this is A times A squared minus four, which is A a minus 2, A plus 2. So actually we already, we already know that this is going to be equal to 0 when A is 0, 2 and minus 2. So two of these, is the next two in fact, take that box. So A equals 2, the determinant of D equals 0. At this point that's enough to pause and say that's answer the first bit of our question. Because if determinant of D is 0, there is not a unique solution. That's it. That's done the first bit, and that's our first mark on this one. The question then said, if the solution is not unique, that's what we just got, determine whether the equations are consistent or inconsistent. So this is the point where we need to dig a little bit deeper into this. We need to look at what the equations look like and decide whether they're consistent or not. We've got 2x plus 2y minus z is 0. We have 2x plus 2y plus z equals 2, because a is 2. And we have x plus y plus 2z equals 2 as well. And I can't remember exactly, there's lots of ways you can go about doing this now. What did I do? At this point, I said, Oh, I called these equations 1, 2 and 3 and said 
thing that I spotted was if you add 1 and 2, you get 4x plus 4y equals 2, which means that x plus y is a half. And if you do equation 3, take away 2 times equation 2, equation, is that the right way around? Yes, that would work, wouldn't it? So that one, take away twice, that one gives us <coughs> minus 3x, <coughs> minus 3y, 2z, take away 2z is 0, 2 minus 2 times 2 is minus 2, which tells us that x plus y is 2 thirds. We've got x plus y is a half from that pair, x plus y is 2 thirds from that pair. That is a contradiction x plus y can't be both of those things, and a contradiction tells us that they are inconsistent. It's worth pointing out here, there are many ways of finding the inconsistency at that point. That was just the way that I did it. There are lots of ways you could have done it to find it. So, actually, when it comes to part C, we can almost use a process of elimination here. If a equals zero, well, we've had it when they were unique. We've had not unique and inconsistent. This is going to be non-unique and consistent. So let's let's check that. Although, actually, remember, there were three values here. So it didn't have to be. But it'd be a bit of a shock if it wasn't. Um, this gives us the equations. Oh, if this gives us the determinant of d is zero, there we go, let's get that bit sorted out. So, not unique. There we go. Make sure we get that mark for showing that bit. Um, we have 2y minus z is 0. We have 2x plus z is 0. We have x plus y is 0. What I did at this point is again call these equations 1, 2, and 3 and spot that if we do equation 1 and add it to equation 2, we get twice equation 3. The three equations are linearly dependent, therefore they are consistent. And there we have a final mark. One last thing to say about this question, from having marked your answers. Please, if you've got z as a variable, put a little line across the middle of it. Because especially in that one there, where we had twos all over the place, it got really difficult to read what was going on in lots of your work. Because you were writing 2x plus 2y plus 2 equals 2. And x plus, two, well, x plus y plus 22 equals 2. I couldn't tell the difference between the z's and the two's. So make sure you put in a little line across the z to make it really clear. Oh yeah, and that's maths.